Hey everybody, fall has arrived here in Wisconsin. We have a few more days of detecting, but now's the time of the year where many of us will start to kind of clean our machines, put stuff away, and do a little bit more research. You know, learn more about our machines, about the hobby, maybe spend some time on next year's permissions. So today, what I'm gonna do is a video. It's, a, it's gonna be an air test. I'm gonna test 37 different items, some trash, some coins and some jewelry and i'm going to repeat this test across my three different detectors the nocta macro simplex the equinox 800 and the xprx so if that sounds interesting to you stay tuned All right, let's take a look at the setup for today's test. What I have set up here are three different boards that you can see here, some of which contain coins, that's the first two. The third contains various items of jewelry, and the fourth contains a few pieces of pretty common trash, bottle caps, pull tabs, nails, that type of thing. And what we're gonna do here we're just gonna do an air test and I just wanna get a feel for the tone. I wanna get a feel for the target ID. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Let's go. Okay, so for the first test here, I'm using the Equinox 800 with my six inch coil. I'm in park one mode. I have my sensitivity set to about 21, okay? And I have noise canceled. My ground balance is set to zero. That's my volume. I have no iron bias on. I'm in five tone mode. This is the default settings for the accept, reject, and my recovery speed is set to six. My iron bias, I'm running FE2, okay? So let's get started. First coin, modern Lincoln. When these are corroded, of course, they ring up all over the place, but today it looks like everything from 19 to 21. Next up, we have a wheat scent. A wheat penny, pretty solid 24.25 on the wheat penny. Next coin is a copper penny, a copper penny ringing up solid 25. Next coin is an Indian head penny, an IHP. 21, 21. Next up is an 1865 two cent coin. By the way, I have not found all of these. Some of these I did find, some I have purchased as part of my collection. Ringing up 22, 23. Okay, now we have a braided haired, braided hair large scent, I believe. Much higher, 33, 34. 3334 is what that's ringing up as. Now we're going to move into the nickels. This first coin is a silver barber nickel. 1213. Okay, one of my favorite coins, the buffalo nickel. Thirteen. Okay. This next coin I just found last week. It is uh, it was my first worn nickel. You can identify those with the mint mark right above the dome on Monticello. Not 100% sure. I'll have to check my notes, but I think these were minted 42, 43, 44. There was just a small set of years. This does have, I believe, 40% silver. I'm not sure about. I could be wrong on the percentage, but at any rate, it's still ringing up as 13.
Now we have a modern nickel. A modern nickel. This is uh, Jefferson nickel here. Also 13. And just for fun, I have a random Roman coin that I purchased off of eBay. My UK friends can perhaps tell us what type of coin this is. I know nothing about this. I don't think this is what you would call a hammered. Maybe it is. I don't know. But it, at any rate, it's a Roman coin. 1920. There we go. Okay, on this next board here, we're going to start with the dimes. We're actually going to start with a modern Roosevelt dime. Ringing up 24, 25. I will see these sometimes ring up higher than that. Next coin is a trime, a very small trime. I just purchased this off of eBay. 1819. Even a 17 there. 17 to 19 for the trime. Next is a barber dime, a barber silver dime. 24, 25. Hmm. Would have expected that to ring up a little bit higher. 24, 25. Next, we have a mercury dime. Beautiful coin, mercury dime. I'll see these ring up 26, 27 sometimes. But today, in the air test here, 25, 26. A silver Roosevelt dime. Silver Roosevelt dime is next. There's the 27, 26. Okay, there we go. Next, we're going to move into the quarters. This is just a modern quarter, a post-1964 quarter. 29.30. Love to find those, put those into the bank. This is a pre-64 silver quarter. 1936 silver quarter. Also ringing up. 29.30. Uh, this is a coin I did find, a Barber Quarter, a 1906 Silver Quarter. 30, 31. Next is a Standing Liberty Quarter SLQ. My friend Dylan just found one of these. 30. But again, would have thought those would have rung up a number or two higher, but they're not. How about that? And then we have a Morgan Silver Dollar here. Morgan Silver Dollar at the end of this board. Let's see what she rings up as. 35, 36. Much higher tone as well. Do you hear the difference in that tone? Okay. Next board. Okay, on this board, we're going to take a look here at some jewelry, starting with a 10 karat gold wedding band. 1617. Have to confess, I often coin shoot and I pass up a lot of the 1617s. Look at that. There's an 18 in there, too. Gold, I know you will find all over the place. There's some great videos that show gold ringing up depending on the type of gold the content all over the place so um, there's some other tests like this that just focus on gold and my key learning there is you're gonna find gold across a lot of numbers um, this is a silver Cub Scout ring I'm not sure if it's silver plated sterling ringing up 2930 on the Knox 800 next is a ring I found on a beach it's a tungsten wedding band men's wedding band 1718 for me with the Knox are a lot of bottle caps but on the beach I'll dig those and I'm glad I did cuz I found that thing next is a piece of uh, jewelry it's a cross again not sure maybe silver plated um, doesn't look like it though does it 17 16 great shape though a uh, small ring also found on the beach. This is marked sterling. 2021. Hmm. Okay. Here we have some um, costume jewelry. The name of this manufacturer escapes me. It's quite popular. Um, 
I will comment on it in the photo here, but you can see that's ringing up 2223. Another piece of costume jewelry. This, in this case, is men's costume jewelry here, 1314. And last on the board here is a woman's costume jewelry ring, also found on a beach, 2223. All right, let's take a look at the next board. Okay, here we have our trash board. Let's see what type of things we can find on the trash board, starting with a large bottle cap, a beer bottle cap, Miller Lite, 1718, a soda bottle cap, 1516, here we have a Corona Lite bottle cap, 15, here we have a pool ring. We're missing the beaver, beaver tail on this one. This is just the pool ring without the beaver tail. 16. With the beaver tail. 13, 14. Often think I'm digging up a nickel and pull those out. Here's a, uh, a, a pull tab from a later date. Just the tab. 14. Okay, and here we have some ferrous metal, some um, some uh, old rusty nails. You're going to see hardly get anything in either one of these. If I put on all metal mode, bring back the areas that were rejected, right, we're getting that iron grunt. Minus three, minus four. Hey folks, I hope that was helpful for you. What I have done um, over the last year here for my various detectors is I compile these different cheat sheets while I'm learning my machine. You know, after a while, you just kind of memorize these numbers. And of course, the tones are important too. And if you have the time, you know, dig those solid tones. Uh, you know, I'm learning too. There's other little nuances as well, depending on what happens to the signal as you're pulling it back from the target. You know, those last few beeps are critical. But in the meantime, I hope some of these target IDs will either confirm for you what you already knew, or maybe give you pause to um, not pass up a target and give it a dig. So at any rate, thanks for watching the video. If you like these, please subscribe, hit the notification bell. Happy hunting.